you know, going back and looking at the Vanderbilt game, um, I thought offensively uh, we created some explosive plays that really helped during the game. Um, done a pretty good job protecting the quarterback early in the game. I felt like as the game went, uh, there's a couple of plays there that we didn't do as good a job. Uh, you know, we had to had a turnover there in the red area and then had a turnover um, there about the 45 yard line. Uh, we, we really got to eliminate those plays. Both, uh, both of them came from protection, not uh, bust or anything, just uh, got to be better technical there and, and uh, get the ball out of her hand. Um, I thought we ran the ball well. Uh, I like the way that uh, Ty and, and Eric and Jabari and D Beckwith uh, all ran the football. Um, the wide receivers created explosive plays there. I thought Cooper Mays again uh, continues to improve up front. Jerome Carvin uh, played really well. Uh, glad to see that uh, he's back in there um, competing and getting a chance to play. You know, defensively, you know, there was. Um, gave up uh, we first of all we were much better in, on third down uh so it's far and away the best game that we played on third down uh in a long time um you know the the one drive in the first half you know we let them convert a third and ten you know they checked we probably should have checked there uh to a different call uh, we did and they get a first down and then converted a couple and then um just didn't get the the middle of the field. We got it, but didn't get it properly there and gave up a touchdown. Uh, and then they they uh, made a good throw and catch there on Alante. Uh, ended up getting a field goal. But, you know, I thought we affected the quarterback. Uh, obviously scored on defense. You know, uh, Bryce Thompson, I think, is the co-defensive player of the week this week in the SEC. You know, he only played on third down, but he made a big play in the game. It um, kind of got us jump started there on, on defense. And, if you look at special teams, um, you know Paxton Brooks really continues to execute very well uh, in the in the punting game. He's done a nice job on kickoffs all year, and then I thought Toby uh, came in and done a really good job. We just asked him to kick PATs, but he done a nice job. One thing to me just disappointing in the game. Uh, it's probably the first game uh, that that we've had uh, penalties. I think we had nine penalties, and they were. They were during the play, you know, I mean, just, you know, um, got to make good judgment uh, and, and finish people off the right way. So, uh, but I thought it was a um, good effort by our guys. I thought our coaching staff done a nice job getting the guys prepared. Our kids continue to play hard. You know, looking at this week, you know, it's the last game for this season in Neyland. Uh, we have a lot of seniors that uh, this will be their last time. Um, and get an opportunity to play against one of the best teams in the country. You know, Texas A&M's having a really good year. Uh, they've got an experienced team, experienced quarterback uh, that's playing really well. Their offensive line's one of the best in the conference. Um, they're doing a really nice job protecting the quarterback, creating explosive plays. They've been very efficient on third down. I think they've ran the ball as well as anybody in our league. Uh, I've got really good running backs defensively, um, playing really good team defense. Um, keeping the ball in front of them, not giving up a lot of explosive plays, create negative plays, uh, give you a lot of different looks. And then they got really good weapons and special teams. So uh, we got a great opportunity on Saturday. I know our guys are looking forward to it. You know, it's really the, it's kind of like bowl practice this week. We don't have school. So, um, you know, we'll get a lot of opportunity to get uh, prepared for this game. And I know our, our guys are excited about it. Questions? We'll start with Austin Price, then David Owen. Coach, you talk about the seniors um, and, and it being senior day and stuff. How, how will they handle that, or how will you ask those guys to handle it? Because obviously a lot of those guys will have the option to come back um, for another year. Well, I, I, I think there, there may be some guys that may participate and some guys that, that, that may not. I don't know. Uh, it's – it's not something we we're, we've really been focused on uh, improving as a team every single day. Uh, when you talk about this, it's kind of unique circumstance we have with guys uh, getting their eligibility back where they could play another year. Uh, we've kind of treated it like it would be a, a junior that may be thinking about declaring for the draft. You know, we're just going to wait till the season's over with. So um, we'll have some guys participate and some won't. It'll, it'll be their choice. Uh, yeah, Jeremy, do you 
uh, um, playing two quarterbacks, is that something that you're, you're still trying to kind of find a guy or are you fine with playing two quarterbacks kind of, you know, uh, for an extended period of time, you know, whether that's into 2021 or, or the rest of the season of the bowl game? How do you view that spot? Yeah, no, I, I really think you'd rather just play one, right? You know, uh, but we got two guys right now that I think are, are really competing hard in practice, um, you know, in JT and in Harrison. And, um, you know, they we, we're giving them the same amount of reps. You know, I've told both of them we're going to look at these last three games and, and just give them the kind of the same opportunity, you know, um, I mentioned before we played Florida uh, that, that, that JT kind of – his shoulder was bothering him a little bit, which is – he was kind of a game-day decision that day, you know, but he felt like he could play. So we got him in there, and he, and he played really well. And I thought he played good Saturday too. He had um, a couple of drops, you know, obviously made one mistake there that we need to eliminate. But uh, I thought both guys operated and played pretty well. They're going to continue to improve, and we're going to play both of them. You know, I think it's a um, – the way this season is, it's a great opportunity to know what we got. Just um, because of the circumstances early in the season and not having a lot of scrimmage time, you know, this is a great opportunity for these guys to really get a chance to go out there in live game action and, and, and see how they're going to do. And I think both of them continue to improve every week. Vince Ferrar – than Dan Harrelson. Jeremy, just to follow up on that quarterback competition you were talking about and splitting those reps, uh, how big of a difference is it when quarterbacks in practice during a, a game week don't get a majority of the reps and they're having to split the reps? How much could that potentially be a factor in, in not preparing them as much, especially when both of those guys are pretty inexperienced? Well, I, I think it's uh, if you, you're going to practice more than one quarterback, right? So you're always going to practice too. The guy that gets left out is the third guy, you know, most of the time. So uh, first and second rep, first and second team reps are probably usually pretty equally split. Um, so, and these guys are going with each group. So it, it's, they're getting kind of the same opportunity. So I don't think there's an issue with that. Dan. Coach, uh, last year down the stretch, you did play two quarterbacks and, they really fed off each other last year, and you guys uh, were able to win some ball games. Do you kind of get that sense right now playing both JT and Harrison that they're kind of feeding off each other and just putting each other in good positions to to win and compete in games? Yeah, well, I think I think both of them are really good teammates. Uh, and you throw Brian in there. Brian, we, we're trying to create a little bit of role for him. Uh, and – you know, he made a really good run down there, and he, he kind of turned his ankle a little bit. So, but uh, just with the quarterback room, I mean, on Saturday, I thought Jarrett done a, a heck of a job kind of on the sideline with Coach Winky and and helping those guys. I, I really like the way that room is. Um, you know, the, these younger guys are getting opportunities, and uh, they're trying to make the most of it. It's, um, you know, and, hey, they, they probably um, – make mistakes that a lot of people don't see, uh, but they're learning from it. Um, they're gaining confidence. The game is going to slow down for them the more they play. So it, it's good to see both of these guys get a chance to go out there and, and improve each week. We'll go to Blake and then Brent. Jeremy, entering this, this final game of the, the regular season, have you received any assurances from, from Philip Fulmer that, that you'll be back uh, next year? You know what? We've been focusing on our, on our uh, every day at practice, um, the teams that we're playing. You know, uh, all of that stuff is always at the end of the season. So we've just been working hard to be the best that we can possibly be. Are you, you know, with, with Auburn making a decision on Gus Malzahn yesterday, are you surprised to see three coaches in, in the, the SEC you know, be, be fired this year and a year played in a pandemic? Well, it absolutely, it's unusual circumstances, right? And, and nobody knows the circumstances around each individual job. Um, you know, I got a lot of respect for all three of those men and um, coaching against them, uh, getting to know them um, while I've coached in this league. 
I think they've done a phenomenal job at the places that they've been, uh, you know, so um, it's really the, the rough part on this when there's a coaching change, whether it's a um, somebody leaving or somebody getting another opportunity, the people that suffer are the student athletes because you build the relationships, um, you know, recruiting them to come to a certain school, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've had it both ways, right? I've, we've, you know, been fired before and, and we've got opportunities before, right? And so the worst part of it is in either scenario is the people that you have created these relationships with and built a bond with to recruit them to come to a certain school. That That's the people that suffer in all this. Brent? Coach, a couple of things. Uh, one, what's an update on Cade Mays' status as you go into this last game? Uh, two, big picture when you – you mentioned Saturday after the game, the opportunity to get to play a lot of younger players and kind of get a look at them. What was your assessment of some of those young players uh, when you looked at the tape in, in terms of, you know, some of those guys getting their real first action? What What is your takeaway with that, those young guys? Well, um, you know, I think if you just go through the defense there, I mean, Amari Thomas uh, continues to play more and more snaps each game. Um, you know, Tyler Barron has played a lot throughout the season and continues to improve. Um, you know, so um, Tamarian McDonald's a guy that, that we've started playing in the last couple of weeks. Uh, they didn't have hardly any practice leading up until about halfway through the season. So, um, you know, I, I think those guys have done a really nice job. Keyshawn Lawrence played a little more Saturday. All these guys, there's these guys and more have played on special teams. Nico Slaughter, Morvin Joseph continues to uh, show flashes. Uh, had a couple of quarterback pressures on Saturday. Uh, you know, offensively, Cooper uh, has has played the last two weeks at center some. You know, uh, the wide receivers, whether it's Jimmy Callaway or or uh, Jalen Hyde or Jimmy Holiday, who couldn't make the trip Saturday. These guys continue to improve. Malachi Weidman. You know, I, I thought Saturday probably the, for the first time he's played the last two weeks on special teams, but D Beckwith got to touch the football, you know. So um, you kind of see a little bit about, um, you know, what kind of ability he's got. I know it's late in the game, but still. Uh, and Jabari Smalls is a guy that I felt like all year, you know, has made people miss and, and done a really nice job. And then, you you know, you throw in Harrison. But the, uh, a lot of these freshmen, there's many, many more, you know, uh, that – in this signing class that have potential to be really good football players. And it, it, it's, um, you know, I'm kind of excited about the off season when we get started on that, or, or maybe uh, if we do go to a bowl, um, the, the opportunity to, to work some of these guys to get back, like we were having these uh, extra periods, you know, opportunity periods. So, you know, we really have a young football team. I think there's probably like 50 freshmen and sophomores on our team. Uh, that really most of them have just experienced two days of, of spring ball. So there's a lot of development, a lot of growth um, for these guys that they're going to have an opportunity to really improve this off season. And then about Cade, status on Cade? I think Cade will be day to day. All right, Trey Wallace and Patrick Brown. Hey, Jeremy, y'all, it looked like tried to run a, a trick play around the 633 mark in the third quarter. Uh, Harrison Bailey was in at quarterback, and then JT Shroud had come in for that one play. Uh, what was kind of the reasoning behind that, and what were you trying to uh, establish on that play? Well, that was one of the plays that, you know, I like to put in one or two plays a week, right? So, um, you know, I actually put in two this week, and neither one of them worked. You know, ran a reverse to Kenny Solomon. Kenny Solomon's probably the fastest guy on our team. Um, probably, if we'd have got one block out there, we'd have gained nine or ten yards, but we only gained one, I think. Uh, and then we put a reverse pass in there, getting in Wildcat. You know, we've jumped in Wildcat a couple of times, and we've never thrown a pass out of it. So, uh, just something. They just happened to bring field pressure, so uh, we didn't get it off, and took a sack. So that was my fault because I put the play in and I told Jim to run it at that time. So I thought it might work, but it didn't. Was was that play for JT Shrout, I guess, is what I'm asking? Well, no, it was really for Brian Maurer. You know, it was really for Brian, but he was hurt, so JT ran it. Yeah. Patrick. 
Jeremy, you mentioned uh, to Marion a, a minute ago, what went into the decision to uh, to start him at safety and kind of how do you think he and, and Jalen McCullough played uh, on Saturday? Well, Jalen played his best game of the year, you know, so that was good to see. Jalen uh, has really been fighting a foot injury uh, since the Missouri game. You know, he missed all of fall camp and uh, just got released today. We played South Carolina, so um, – you know, he's just been battling this all year. Uh, but it was good to see him. He played well. Uh, Tamarian has been playing some in third down uh, during the games in our Dime Rabbit package So and playing on special teams. So uh, we really like the combination of both of those guys and, uh, you know, feel like they, they both have a chance to be really good players for us. We'll go to Gustavo. Coach, uh, you said that, uh, there's a uh, this Saturday is going to be a great opportunity to play, and Texas A&M is involved in the college football playoff run. Does this affect you guys? You know, this game seemed like a playoff game, especially for Texas A&M. Does this affect you guys in some sort of way, especially psychologically? Well, I don't think it's going to affect us psychologically. Uh, I think we're playing against a good football team that's very well coached, and it's a great opportunity. You know, we played against a bunch of good football teams this year. So um, it's the last game in Neyland. I know our kids are excited about playing at home again. Uh, so, you know, it's a great opportunity. Back to Brent Hubs. Coach, you mentioned Texas A&M's ability to run the football. Your defense has been good against the run the last two weeks. What does what does A and M do well um, running the football? Is it a schematic thing, or what? What do you really like about their run game, and what's the challenge for your front seven against their rushing attack? Well, to start, their quarterback is very athletic. Um, he's probably not ran it as much this year as I've seen him run it in the past, uh, but he's a guy that's obviously a threat with his feet. They've got really big backs. Uh, they don't go down easy. They're big up front. They have a lot of experience. They have one of the best tight ends uh, in the conference, uh, whether it's playing in the run game or the throw game. He's a really talented young man. Uh, they play multiple backs. They wear on teams as the game goes, and they're committed to being a physical football team. Go back to Blake, then Patrick. Jeremy, you mentioned uh, D. Beckwith. Um, you know, what do you feel like his his future is for, for you in this program? I mean, do you like what he brings at, at running back? Could he be someone you uh, you look to move around more in, in the offseason? No, I like him at running back. It, it's, uh, you know, when we recruited him, um, <clears throat> we didn't know exactly where we would play him. We just knew we wanted him on our team. Uh, this guy has a lot of versatility, you know, um, we started him off at wide receiver, but you know, when he got here, he was a lot bigger than he was when we signed him. So uh, he's a guy that continues to grow and develop and, uh, but he's, he's really good with the ball in his hand. So uh, just putting him back there at running back and trying to create a home for him, I think has been really good for him. And um, I know coach Graham is excited about him and some of the, the other younger backs. So, um, you know, I, I feel like that's where he'll be. Jeremy, you've you touched on this before with, with Bryce. He's kind of lined up with safety and lined up inside and, and, and your and your dime package on third down. Do you think that maybe is, is a position you guys might be looking at him more, uh, I don't want to say permanently, but maybe moving him inside more uh, on a more regular basis next season, or do you want to keep him outside? No, I just think he's a guy that can play multiple spots. Uh, you know, you, you would like to sign guys that can play multiple spots. It's easier to – create depth and, and keep your best players on the field. So Bryce is a guy that can do that. Other questions? All right, thank you all very much.